Oh, we are diving back into the cesspool, everybody. It's been around seven hours since Pantheon launched their 24-7 basic overview video. <laughs> it's currently ratioed 500 downvotes, at least according to what I can see. It might be higher than that because these things aren't necessarily always accurate. It could be lower than that, too. Uh, too. It's 500 to 125, which means it has an overwhelmingly negative... This is, this is what you call ratioing. This is what happened to Rings of Power when they started doing those press releases with all those fans who were doing those uh we're gonna be it's gonna be an awesome show yay this is exact this is the biggest train wreck that i've seen in crowdfunding since chronicles of illyria everywhere you go massively op mmrpg.com mmo bomb wherever you want to go no one is saying anything good about pantheon rise of the fallen right now and visionary realms on top of all of this is the firing of Kilson, and if you've been paying attention to the drama that's been unfolding there, the way that was handled, where they fired him by text messaging after 10 years, obviously there's nuances there, we don't know the full story, but it doesn't look good for Visionary Realms. This is on top of the graphics changes, where they went from the graphics that were being promoted, is we're gonna, we, we have to change to the HDPR pipeline because we need that high definition rendering because we gotta get the most out of Unity and we promise it's gonna look like this and this is our concept art and these are what we're trying to achieve and these are the goals and suddenly it's like, oh no guys, we gotta change it up and make it a World of Warcraft lookalike because that's the only way we're gonna be able to get it to you in a reasonable amount of time because we're out of money and we don't have an art team and we can't actually afford anybody who could do art and we don't have anybody who can actually handle the engineering on the graphical department. Etc. 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 So, you know, they're out of funding, they don't have money, and instead they give us, well, not us, I haven't, I'm not in it for anything, I haven't backed this game, and I've just been sort of sitting on the sidelines for years, but they're giving people, the public, a graphically generic game when other things were promised, you know, they wanted the high definition rendering pipeline because that was going to make the game look better. Then they offer this. And on top of this, you're firing people. And then on top of that, you're doing this 24 7 thing. And thank God, thank the gods for whistleblowers because the whistleblowers, and no, they are not rats, they are not narcs. Whistleblowers are people who come out with information that serves the public. And this information about a 24 7 product, this extraction mode, that is somehow going to save the future of Pantheon. This was not what people backed. The downvoting that's happening over here is the proof of people being upset. No one backed this game. Not the people who backed the failed Kickstarter. Not the people who backed Brad's vision. There is nothing about Brad's vision right here. Brad's vision is dead and gone. It's as dead as the man himself. Rest in peace in the grave. This is not what Brad's vision was, and this has nothing to do with what people backed or invested in. I feel so sorry for people like Co Carnage and others who were hoodwinked to put money into this project. But we are going to react to this video because why not? It's out there. It's being rationed to death and back. I honestly want to see what they're trying to tell people to sell another line of copium to everybody. So let's take a look. <laughs> oh my god, 24 Hello everyone. In our newsletter released on 1026, we shared some information about our new 247 mode to the general public. If you haven't already dug into it, I encourage you to head to PantheonMMO.com to catch up on the details. I could give you the short version. It's a bunch of kind of... Here's the stuff we're delivering you that's not the stuff that you were promised and not the stuff that you invested in and not the stuff you backed for. That's pretty much the long and short of it. While today is the first public announcement detailing 247, our VIPs and testers have been experiencing the intensity of this new mode over the last month. While this video will not be all-encompassing of the features of 247, it is my intent for it to instead act as a starter overview, to take a moment to explain some of the key functionality and show it in action. Today we'll be discussing Tazrin's Gaze, the tower that will act as a hub for organizing your epic loot and skills as well as where you'll earn favor with the Watchers. From here, you'll teleport into Terminus's open world, as well as where you will return when you're done with your journey, before it's too late. As with anything, stay tuned in to PantheonMMO.com and our socials as we continue to cover more details and updates with gameplay footage in the future. 
By the way, this is the extraction mode he's talking about. This has nothing to do with the MMORPG that was promised for the last decade that people backed, that people have been waiting for for a decade. This is not the MMORPG that Brad McQuaid promoted. This has nothing to do with Brad's vision. This is there as in their own words, as of the statements that were made like a week ago and in their Discord channel, they don't have enough money to complete the game in a reasonable amount of time, and this is their last-ditch Hail Mary effort to try to raise funding because, crowd, they, in their words, crowdfunding has dried up. We need to monetize this 24-7 extraction model because we need precious data from it, but we also need to be able to generate enough interest to show investors that we have a viable product that they'll want to invest and help us develop the MMO faster. I, don't take my word for it. Those are their words. I'm sort of paraphrasing here, but you can go read all the press releases and everything else about it. It's, it's, it's a, whoo. That said, let's get into it. Tazrin's Gaze is your base of operations in 247. Upon starting your journey, you'll begin within the chamber of the tower. Here, you'll find your stash, as well as various crafting tables to forge exciting new items to aid you in your survival while exploring Terminus. Cut. I almost want to cry, guys. Like, for those of you who don't remember, I was way back in the day before Kilson. I was their first community manager, and I was only there for a few months because I refused to work without pay. And I had a head-to-head -head with Brad about wanting a letter of intent, and a bunch of other stuff went down. But eventually, I just made my way out because I didn't want to be attached to something where I wasn't going to get the paycheck. Now, Kilson put in 10 years. Kudos to him. But it's so sad to me to see where this game was back then. And where it is today, because this is nothing. This has nothing to do with what people have been wanting for years and years and years. <laughs> oh my god. Opening your inventory, you'll find a torn letter, welcoming you to the tower and directing you to meet the Scavenger, one of the Eleven Watchers. Using a teleporter within the starting room, you'll be taken to the atrium, where the Watchers will reside. Following your torn letter will connect you with the Scavenger, who will give you your first task. These tasks given by the Watchers will enable you to progress a faction system with each one, unlocking new items for purchase and new tasks to further your growth for individual relationships as well as your personal character growth. This includes access to new abilities and skills as well as basic leveling to increase the strength of your character. The depth of this system will at time pit various Watchers against each other as well, and you'll have to decide which of the Watchers you want to pursue a deeper relationship with for more enticing rewards. It's also important to note that from the tower, you will be able to access a friends list and search for fellow players to group up with before heading into the world. It's always safer in a group, but then you'd have to share loot, so I'll be heading in in this gameplay footage alone. Once you have selected the task or tasks that entice you, it's time to head into Thronefast and face the danger that awaits. Before heading out to complete your objectives, it's important to note that getting prepared is crucial to your survival. Hit your stash and equip the items you wish to travel out with, but also be sure to set up your abilities properly, as you will not be able to alter your skills once in Thronefast. Oh, and make sure you're careful out there, because dying means that you'll lose what's on your character unless those items equipped are labeled as lifebound. Oh my god. Be forewarned, the level of risk causes some pretty high intensity out there. Once geared up and ready to go, click the portal in the center of the chamber and you're on your way. It's also worth noting that you'll have the option to enter a standard PvE world or up the ante by heading into a PvP version of the world. Remember, the same roles apply. You'll have one life to live down there, and choosing PvP means the players around you become new dangerous wrinkles in which adds to the threat that Terminus already possesses. At least Choose the loading careful, screen looks but good. remember, with risk comes reward. Sure, you could die and lose all your gear, but taking out another player? Well, that means what's theirs is now yours. So which option will you pick? For this demonstration, I've selected a single starter task to explore the lands of Thornfast and find the Oceanside Gate to return to the tower. Sure, it sounds easy enough, but this means not only do we need to survive the dangers we face, but also... So I'd like to point out as well, you're looking at a big, huge open area. I see one lone monster. There's nothing else here. That is part of the issue with their programming team not being able to work within the confines of Unity that well and because they don't have the engineering team who can actually deal with the shaders and everything else that, that are dealing, it's, it's hindering performance. Um, and when you don't have any population, it's because 
you have issues with performance. Also find the required gate before we run out of time. And I should also say that uh, I have seen previous uh, footage from... Can't say where I saw the footage, but I have seen previous footage from tests where there were a lot of things in the ground. Performance was okay, but that was before they made this graphical switch. For if we do not, we become a casualty of Terminus. As a reminder, when heading into a mission, it's really up to you in regards to how many tasks you'd like to focus on, or even ignore those tasks oh, that completely. Is painfully... and explore the world for gear and experience to boost your character's power the way you want. Painfully While a slow task combat. To start, keep in mind whatever you find via uh... looting enemies or through various loot containers in the world can be. Guys, we're in 2023. Why is it taking so long to kill a first-level monster? Take him back to your tower to store for future missions. You'll also find various crafting materials or even items that are desirable for the Watchers themselves. It's also important to note that even if you do perish on your journey, all the experience you've gained to progress your character will still remain. So I'm going to stop talking. Here's some gameplay of me walking through the task given to me by the scavenger. Yay, solo play in a game that was supposed to be an MMORPG with a focus on group-based exploration and group-based gameplay and group-based dungeons. Oh, this is so sad. Quick commercial break, everyone, to give a shout out to our first official guild officer, Bubblonia, as well as all of the guild champions, and of course, all of the members who help keep me on the air full time. To join as a member, simply click that join button below and pick your tier, but you can also support with super chats on any live stream or premiere or super thanks on any upload or YouTube short. Don't forget the Discord. Let's get back to the video. There's nothing here. There's literally, they're showing nothing. They're showing a great big vast emptiness. There's like no mobs. You've got some bats. And some snakes. There's no NPCs. Why are you showing this? How is this supposed to inspire people to want to give you more money or invest? Oh my god. Okay, so now we're ready to head back to the tower with our newfound loot. And to increase our faction by turning in my task. So that means it's time to find a gate that's open within Thronefast and make our way home. In the case of the task I'm currently working on, it's the ocean side There's gate a bear. for it. You'll notice gate statuses in the window at the top of the screen. So be careful, because not all gates will always be ready for extraction. So let's head home with our loot, shall we? What excites us most about this survival mode of gameplay is that the core experience is truly the Pantheon loop we have been working No, towards. it's not! a time limit that adds a bit of intensity to the experience. It is not! This allows us to gather some great feedback on our various systems and create replayability while still giving the player the freedom to adventure in the world as they see fit. <laughs> just to reiterate, this is just a quick taste of what 247 brings to the oh table. Oh my god. Expect more information in the future, and stay tuned to our various social media platforms for more updates. Thank you for watching, and until next time. Guys, I can't, I can't stop. Like, this is just, I would love to cover other things, but this is a train wreck that you just can't look away from. So when I started this video, it had five, almost five, it had 499 downvotes. At 125 up, let's refresh. Just in the time that I watched it. Which was what? We've been here 10 minutes or so. N a zero upvotes and another 22 downvotes. This thing is getting ratioed to hell and back. Um, it is not looking good for Pantheon, everybody. Visionary Realms, what are you thinking? This is not what people backed. This is not what Brad McQuaid's vision was. This is a desperate Hail Mary to try to get more funding because, and I just don't get it because you guys claimed that you were fully funded several years ago and you've, you've said that Project Fairthal was the end, yeah, was the last big push and that's going to get us all these investors. And... Wow. I'm so glad that I did not put any money into this game and I feel really sorry for people who, who did and this is what they're getting out of it. This is by far, next to Chronicles of Illyria, this is the biggest 
crap storm I've seen in crowdfunding. It's just a level of, it, I'm befuddled. I'm actually, you know, yeah, I've done a 14, almost 50 minute video, but there's a part of me that's somewhat speechless because I just can't, it's just sad. It's sad. So, 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 so sad. Anyway, like, subscribe, hit the bell icon if you want me to cover more of this. Or if you want to get more of the other videos that I do, join the Discord. Links are down below. And don't forget, I am multi-streaming now on Twitch and YouTube. So you can get the boast of Beth World. Beth the Beth World. You can get the boast best of both worlds, depending on what you prefer and where you want to go. So see you next time, everybody. Stay safe. Happy gaming. And don't fall for scams, guys. Just make sure you know what you're doing with your money before you spend it.